Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on the channel. Today we are going to be continuing my 13 days of Halloween series with the brand new VHS movie, VHS 94. And if you guys don't know what the VHS series is, it's essentially, basically, you know, you give a bunch of different filmmakers a 20 minute horror short film within this giant anthology series. And so you have the original VHS, VHS 2, VHS Viral, and now this is the fourth installment in the series. And so... I am a so-so fan of this series. Honestly, I really like the first one. I think most of those shorts are really solid, but with a, a formats like this, you're always gonna have some shorts that are better than others. And honestly, this new one is absolutely no different than that. I think that there are a lot of good ones, but also a lot of just really mediocre ones. And I think this is honestly one of the more decent VHS movies. I haven't seen the original two in quite a while, and I never watched VHS Viral because I heard it was terrible. So I never went ahead and watched that one. So I'm sure this is better than VHS Viral. I just can't really compare with the first two because I haven't seen them in a while. But in terms of the shorts themselves, I can talk about that. And this will be a spoiler review for this you know this entire movie so if you guys have not seen VHS viral it's on shutter you guys can go ahead and watch it now and I thought it was pretty decent I thought it started off really well and each short progressively got worse so let's just get into each one the first short is directed by Chloe Okuno and it's called the storm drain and this one essentially follows a reporter and her cameraman that are kind of like are going through this town and this legend of this ratma like rat man person creature thing and so they're doing this report and they're standing in front of this storm drain and there's a lot of people like staring down at them and it's very very creepy and unsettling this is by far my favorite shorts in vhs 94 it just is perfectly you know the, the tension in it and the the uncomfortableness and all the it, it just felt everything that it did it did as well as it possibly could have because you have these characters you have a reason for them to be being filmed the entire time because a lot of you know found footage type movies struggle with you know giving a purpose to them having a camera always on and so this reporter really wants to break out and become you know have a great breaking story and so she's always after that story and so she wants to go deeper into the storm drain to get that story and once they start hearing these things and start you know seeing these these people that are down there it gets really really unsettling that build up up until the reveal of the Ratma kind of creature design which is incredibly unsettling and creepy and disturbing and this cult that essentially has a formed around it that kind of praises this thing it's very very creepy and I loved every second of that and it all leads up into an ending where you have you know her she she gets out of the storm drain you know the cameraman dies unfortunately and I like that humor and that banter between the two of them I thought that really worked as well that dialogue that they had but once she gets out she gets back you know onto the news broadcast and she kind of like pukes this like this blood that kind of melts the guy's face off in in the the newscast like live on TV and it's like incredibly gruesome and just brutal and gory and I love that and then she just kind of goes on like nothing ever happened she's saying Ratma and like all these different things and it's it's really creepy I loved this first short film I think it's incredibly well directed I think it's easily by far the best one in this this movie itself I don't think it comes anywhere close to that one in the first VHS you know that creepy you know, woman that just kind of is all deformed. That one is just not okay. That one creeped me out. That one's terrifying. It's not nearly as good as, you know, the high peaks of the original two VHS movies, but in terms of this movie itself, it is very, very strong. This movie started off on a very strong foot. The next one is called The Open Wake, directed by Simon Barrett, and this one I thought was also very, very solid. I think it also kind of struggles with, you know, the reason of why you have to, you know, have the cameras on the entire time. And it does have a reason. So essentially this main character, she is, you know, at an open wake, you know, in a funeral home and she has, you know, a body in a casket that is a closed casket because apparently he is absurdly deformed, at least, you know, appears deformed. And so she can't look at the body. The, the other people who work there are saying, do not look at the body, but she's going to be there alone during the storm. And maybe people are going to show up for this, but they're not, they're not really thinking that anybody's going to show up to this poor guy's wake. So she's there alone and she's asked to film all night so she has like these four different cameras around the room that are constantly filming and it kind of reminded me of that one episode of the haunting of hill house and you know me i absolutely love the haunting of hill house and that episode inside the funeral home is by far the my favorite episode of that series but i think this one kind of takes a while to get going because it's definitely one of those things where you know she hears a noise every once in a while she goes and investigates the casket and it's a lot of that and so it's not as you know, creepy and, un and unsettling throughout the entire 20 minutes like the last one was, but it does really have a lot of great tension once things start really getting, you know, to the peak of this story. And so with this storm going on and this casket's falling over and these 
phone calls that she has with these people, you know, concerned about what is actually going on or what happened to this guy. It's it really does build up to a really great ending where, you know, she discovers that this casket is now empty and this guy is now walking around and his head like slid off and it's like all deformed. It's again really gruesome and exactly what you want from a VHS movie. And now you get that found footage type of, you know, horror that works really well because she's using the camera as a flashlight because that's the only light that she has because the storm is knocking everything over and is like blowing out the windows and it's getting really really intense and it's all contained in this one room and it's, just, it's like this zombie creature that's chasing after it's very very solid and the head is just lying around the effects in this one worked seamlessly and i i'm saying that for a reason because the next one really does struggle with the effects and kind of having a seamless you know mix between that live action you know and that that cgi aspect of the shorts but this one i thought was very well put together especially when it came to the end of it once it got going not as good as the first one not as creepy as that first one with the the rat man thing that one is just really creepy this one was just a lot of fun the next one is called the subject directed by timo tajanto I hope I said his name right. This is actually a Japanese directed, you know, short in the VHS series, which is the first time that they've ever had, you know, I think it's the first time they've ever had a foreign country kind of, you know, direct a short within the VHS movies. And so this one is a very strange one. It's called The Subject. It's about this mad scientist essentially kind of taking technology and merging them with these bodies, these victims essentially that he's taking. He has like a bunch, I forgot the number of the victim, but they're like at least like almost a hundred different victims that he's, you know, tested on, he's experimented on, trying to merge technology and, you know, the human anatomy with. And it's very, very creepy with the way that it starts off and the way that it sets up. And this mad scientist is a really interesting character because of the things that he's doing. And you find out that all these people have gone missing and, you know, he's wanted and he's doing this to try to save people, to try to, you know, make this technology able to, you know, be able to heal people and to be able to like be a next human evolution of sorts. And so he has an interesting character story but once the short really starts starts to get going and you see that this the main character is uh i think the short does it the best like the purpose of it being found footage because the main character of it this woman has her face essentially has been replaced by a camera so it looks really really creepy and so the entire thing is from her perspective it's like a hardcore henry type of thing this first person video game-esque type of you know visuals that it has throughout the entire thing but it more so falls into the action type of horror that is kind of you know starting to become popular here in the united states and i guess in general because you know like malignant i thought malignant was a lot of fun i thought that was a very fun movie especially the last half of it, it was just kind of insane but it's a horror movie that's shot like an action movie and i think somebody tweeted that and ever since i saw that tweet it's like yeah that's very true a lot of horror movies today kind of decide to make them more action movies than horror movies so i didn't find this one scary really at all i thought it had a kind of you know creepy start and kind of you know, trying to figure out what exactly this mad scientist is doing but once the cops start raiding in and all this gunfire starts happening and like the action and this other you know mechanical guys are slicing people in half and just like completely obliterating people it gets like, absurdly gruesome like the the previous two but the problem with it is the CGI does not blend as well as the last short did because there's a lot of that visual effects. You're dealing with essentially this, you know, giant robotic creature that is almost all digital effects. And so you have him fighting all these different cops and it just doesn't blend seamlessly. And this is VHS 94. And so the first two shorts kind of have that, you know, classic retro type of feel from the 90s. And this one does not have that. It just doesn't seem like it fits in. I guess visually with the other two, mainly because it does uh, have a lot of visual effects in it as well. That is, they just didn't have the budget to make it look great. It doesn't look bad by any means, but it's definitely noticeable that it is visual effects versus, you know, the last two being very practical, being very, I guess, grounded into the 90s. This one just felt a little too clean, a little too crisp, and just not as, I guess, horror based more action based and the next one is called terror directed by ryan prowse and this one i thought was easily the the worst of the bunch i thought i see what they were going for it's a very politically charged you know short film within this entire vhs thing and i, and I get what they were going for and i think they were honestly kind of going for a more hor uh, horror comedy type aspect to it but that's not what i was expecting going into this one and so i think you know looking at it in that lens it might be a lot more funny a lot more ironic the fact that you know they have these characters who call themselves I think like the first Patriots or something like that and they are definitely you know oh no uh, I guess a representation of like Trump supporters or like you know the Proud Boys or something like that and they all get brutally murdered by the supernatural force that they kind of are trying to use to try to take down and topple the government this this weapon that they have but they're so ignorant they're so idiotic that it kind of backfires on them and it and they all get killed from it 
and you know some of them kill each other there's a really funny scene when things start when shit hits the fan in this one and then you know they they're like kind of shooting each other at first like this guy's on top of the truck and he gets shot by another guy it's kind of comedic and i think they were going for comedy i think i read one, one review that said that they were going for comedy so maybe if i kind of accepted that fact i think i might have enjoyed this one a little bit more than i did because i was trying to take it seriously even though it was kind of really over the top and ridiculous and the performances were very very over the top and also the whole political aspect the whole political commentary in this one is very ham-fisted it is very in your face it was not subtle at all and so i guess that could also be another thing that can you know kind of scare people away from this short or kind of like alienate people because i like more subtlety in these horror you know shorts and this one is just very very blatant but i guess that's kind of what vhs does vhs is not you know they're contained 20 minute things so you can't you know have this long extended you know think piece horror you know art house thing you you kind of just have to get into it and make the, exactly what you want to make and i think in that way all of these shorts made exactly what they wanted to make the first one wanted to make a really creepy and atmospheric you know cultish type you know creepy story with this rat man creature the second one wanted to make a nice little contained you know haunted house sort of you know feel to it the third one wanted to be like an action crazy you know shit hits the fan and everything is just kind of bonkers that one just really really goes for it and this last one goes for that political commentary goes for that more comedic aspect and this ironic take of the these characters getting what they deserve even though they think that they're doing something so amazing i guess in that way it does work it just kind of overall i think every single short progressively got worse and of course when you have a vhs film you have an overall storyline that kind of ties everything together with these you know cops doing this drug raid and so this will be the fifth and final short of this film it's called holy hell and it's directed by jennifer reader and this one i thought was kind of it, it wasn't great it has you know these cops that we can you know, break into this little they think it's a drug raid at first but then they kind of see all these you know creepy dead uh, like bodies that are all mutilated at the beginning of the movie and i thought that setup for this you know frame device was really solid it was very creepy the production design was great but as in it, it kind of progressed and all these cops are kind of being taken out one by one and they're watching the vhs tapes it just didn't seem like it all fully tied together because there's some themes of what each short was about kind of tied into the characters and what these two women were doing to kind of take out all these cops and it was all planned and like pre-plotted and all that sort of stuff but the themes of each individual shorts i feel like didn't fit with what they were trying to say with that actual you know framing device i feel like the first two don't really have that political commentary that the second two had because you know you had the the corrupt cops in the in the third one with the japanese directed one and then you have obviously the whole you know uh patriot patriotic you know type of proud boy type thing in the fourth one and that does kind of fit thematically with you know the framing device that they are trying to have and so i guess in that way it works with the first two i just don't see the correlation with that so it just doesn't really work overall and i think you know some of the dialogue especially some of the dialogue in this fourth one or in this fifth one the the framing device of it all is just kind of weak and kind of campy and maybe that's what they were going for honestly i don't know i don't really like too much camp in my horror movies sometimes it works really well like the last half of malignant but in the first half of malignant didn't work at all for me so i guess it's just kind of depends on your taste but overall i thought vhs 94 was a decent watch i had fun watching it and I'm, I'm glad i did i i do like you know going back to the world of vhs and one day you know i'm a filmmaker myself i'm going to film school i would love to direct a horror short in the the vhs series that i feel like that'd be so much fun to be given the opportunity to just kind of like go for it and do this you know contained little short film in this you know giants you know theatrical release movie even though this is now a streaming movie and so i hope they do continue making these vhs movies and giving these smaller filmmakers the opportunity to do something you know kind of crazy and wild and just kind of put it out there so if you guys have not seen vhs 94 i know i just spoiled the crap out of it but i do think it's worth watching i do think it's one of the more decent you know sequels of this series and so it's definitely worth watching especially for the first two short films i guess really those first two are really solid i really like them a lot and it just kind of went downhill from there but that's just what vhs does so if you guys did enjoy this video make sure you guys subscribe to the channel leave a like if you guys enjoyed and comment down below what your favorite short was of the vhs 94 and what your overall favorite short is in general so i hope you guys enjoyed this video make sure you guys subscribe like i said comment down below do all those things and i hope to see you all in my next one mm -hmm.